All right, so do I need another sketchbook? No. Do I have sketchbooks lying around that I've barely even used? Uh, yes. Am I making myself another sketchbook today because it will make me happy? Absolutely. Hello and welcome back to another video where it has been a hot minute since I've done a bookbinding project on this channel. And after the last few projects I've done being quite detailed and time consuming, I thought it'd be fun to take a little bit of a break and make myself a little fancy notebook as a treat. I've been really enjoying the nature theme projects and recently I've been seeing these leaf inspired books and bags that look like they'd be perfect for a fairy or a druid or I don't know, but I just want one for myself. Myself. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a fancy inspired leather bound long stitch traveler's journal, which I know might sound like a lot, but this should actually be a pretty beginner friendly bookbinding project. This book will be great if you just want a unique notebook for D&D notes or something to bring as a prop to a renaissance fair or a LARP, or if you just want a nice little sketchbook to have. But I'm excited to take a little break and make a more fun and cozy project. But before we get started on the project, this video is sponsored by a brand that has been a huge supporter of the channel, and that's Audible. It's Mental Health Awareness Month and audiobooks can be a fantastic way to help get advice or just take a break for a little bit. Audible has a wide variety of books relating to mental health to help you find motivation, self-help, or just to learn new experiences. Or for me, audiobooks are a fantastic way to just set time away from myself and take a break for a little bit. Like right now, I'm listening to Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, which is basically like if you had a D&D org bar barbarian just start a coffee shop after the campaign is over, this is where that book picks up. It's like a Dungeons and Dragons coffee shop AU, what can I say? It's just this sweet slice of life story that's so nice to sit down and listen to and take my mind off of things for just a little bit. New members can try this audiobook or any other audiobook of their choice for free with Audible's 30 day free trial. And you even get to keep the book if you decide to cancel later. So head over to audible.com slash creative or text creative to 500 500 to try Audible today. Thank you once again to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now let's get started on our project. Alrighty then, first things first is gathering up the supplies. Another good thing about this project is I'm going to be trying to use materials that I already have so I don't have to go out and buy anything else. Like old leather that I have from the last project that's just kind of cut weird. Green felt that I genuinely don't know why I have, but it's going to be really good for the leaf, so that's good. And it's a book, so we're going to be needing paper and this old sketchbook that I have genuinely not used in years. I think I'm just going to take it from this. What do I have in here? It's mostly empty, but I do have a few things in here. Oh, Voltron fan art. <laughs> this really is old. Okay, this needs to be buried and never seen again. Anyway, we can take this sketchbook apart and make it into something a little bit more whimsical. <laughs> I always forget how long it takes to rip up a sketchbook. If your book binding project doesn't start with you unbinding another book first, is it really book binding? <laughs> In total, I ended up using 48 sheets of paper from this book. And this cover could be taken apart for another book project later, so I'm going to keep that on hand. Now that we have our stolen sheets of paper, it's time to fold them all in half. I'm using a bookbinding tool called a bone folder, but you can just use a finger or another flat object. It's just good to use a tool if you have to fold an entire book's worth of paper, which is another tedious thing I forget. Takes a while. All right, it's gonna take a bit to fold all this paper. So how y'all been doing? I've been good. The channel just hit 100K last month, so that was pretty cool. And also thank you, couldn't have done it without all of you, obviously. <laughs> that sounds so fake. I'm, I'm trying to be genuine. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, 100K was one of my only goals when I started YouTube. Like I had no idea what I wanted, but I knew that I wanted that silver play button or plaque or creator award, whatever they call it now. Like, I think I'm part of the first generation that grew up watching YouTubers that are now starting to become YouTubers themselves. So it was definitely very surreal hitting the milestone just because like I grew up seeing YouTubers getting play buttons, which genuinely to me, I care more about getting a silver plaque than I did about getting my college degree. I mean, I literally got my college degree lost in the mail because I forgot to update the mailing address. My college emailed me being like, hey, where do you want us to, to send 
done the degree now. And I didn't see the email until like a month or two later. I'm like, well, it's too late to email them back now. So I guess I just, I just never got my degree. <laughs> but I swear to God, if something happened to the silver plaque, I would be throwing hands with, with Susan or whoever the new CEO is now. Which is more important, a college degree or the lowest tier of a YouTube play button? <laughs> One's more shiny than a piece of paper. So that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> and to think this whole YouTube career started because I took a bookbinding class and being obsessed with Minecraft YouTubers, but it, a good part bookbinding, so. <laughs> Mini story time aside, once all the paper is folded, we can start grouping them into signatures. In bookbinding, so you don't have to sew each individual sheet of paper together, you stack four to eight sheets of paper inside of each other to create these signatures. I went with an eight page signature and I had enough to make about six of them. In case you're curious how big this book's going to be, one signature equals 32 pages. So times six, it's going to be 192 pages. And I would just like to point out that yes, the rainy day bookbinding vibes were immaculate. Jump scare for any of the French nobles watching, but it's time to get out the guillotine. Since these were all taken out of a sketchbook, that means that they have the rough edges at the top. So I trimmed the height of the pages down to eight inches and then evened out the side and trimmed it to five and a half inches. After a few satisfying chops, our pages are now nice and even. And to make sure that the pages lie flat, I'm going to press them with, you know, just a couple of books I have lying around. <laughs> Sorry, I love that I can just flex my Percy Jackson set. Though don't ask me how much I've actually read, you will not like the answer. Now moving on to the leather. This is a veggie tan leather that I got off of Amazon. It's about two millimeters. It's definitely not the highest quality leather in the world, but not everyone has a leather shop around them. And honestly, this one worked fine for this project. So I'll leave a link in the description down below. All you need is to cut a rectangle that is slightly bigger than your pages. And then here I'm just rolling it out to kind of give it some wrinkles and also to just soften the leather. This will also help it give it more of a weathered leather. What weathered leather? Yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, it's time to hurry up and dye the leather a dark brown. Sorry, I don't think I'll ever get tired of the dyeing puns. <laughs> also, I don't know what it is, but whenever I get out with the leather working tools, I just feel like the toy repair guy from Toy Story 2. I don't know what it is about that scene that makes it so ingrained in everyone's head, but like every single time I always think of it. Uh, anyways, I've dyed leather a few times before and I've normally been super conscious of having it not be streaky or blotchy, but this time I kind of want it to be streaky. That way it looks a little bit more organic, almost like tree bark, I guess. Maybe that's the reason I'm like in the nature project so much because you can just do whatever and say, well, it's more organic that way. <laughs> After about two coats of dye on each side, I was pretty pleased with the color that I got. One last step was just to let the leather dry and then add a matte finish to it. And I believe this should also stop the leather from rubbing off, but don't quote me on that. All right, now that our leather has dried and the pages are all done, it's time to move on to sewing. Um, so I've done this kind of book before, but for the life of me, I genuinely cannot remember where to start for the sewing. <laughs> I just, I can't remember at all what I did. So not me uh, looking up my own video to see how I did it. <laughs> This is honestly the true test to see if my tutorials are actually any good to see if I myself can follow them after I've forgotten how to do it. <laughs> Okay, according to myself, apparently the first step is to create a template so you can punch holes in all your pages. The marks for this is one inch away and one fourth inch away from the top and bottom edge of the paper. Then on a cork board or anything that you can punch a needle into, take a signature and place the template on the crease. And then I'm going to take my owl, but I've already used push pin before, and then just punch the four holes into the pages. Once done to all the signatures, they should hypothetically all be aligned and ready for sewing. Now we have to make another template for the leather. Mark a line in the middle and then make five more even space dashes around it. Repeat this on the other side of the paper and then connect these lines. This is where your signatures are going to line up, but it kind of just does look like a music staff. Now taking the template from before, we can align it and mark out where the holes need to be. Now to punch a hole through leather, you're going to have to take a mallet, or in my case, an Ikea hammer. I'm just going to gently tap until it punches a hole through the leather. Also, as a side note, make sure your template doesn't move around too much or it just might end up like mine. That's fine, it's just going to have seven holes on the side for funsies. 
Um, it's just, it has a little bit of wonk to it. That That's what it is. It, I blame the fact that I was filming, so it's honestly y'all's fault that this happened. <laughs> no, it'll be our little secret. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Moving on from that, it's time to start sewing the pages together. For sewing with leather, you're going to want a thick wax thread. Since I have six signatures, I'm going to need approximately about six times the length of the book. Once you have your string, it's time to thread the needle on one side, and then on the other side, you're going to tie a knot. It doesn't have to be anything too big, just enough to catch on the page so it doesn't go through the hole. But at this point, Mumbo had to be a good supervisor and make sure that this thread was up to standard. Mumbo always finds her way in my videos somehow. Maybe it's because she loves how everyone calls her so cute in the comments. Definitely not me using my cat for YouTube engagement or anything. Anyway, to start sewing these pages, first step is to enter in through the inside of the first signature, and then to pull the needle through to the top first hole on the leather. Then you're going to immediately turn around and put the needle right back through the same hole. Pull the thread, but make sure that you leave a small loop on the outside of the cover. Continuing with the needle on the inside, you're going to move down to the second hole, and then once again pull the needle back out to the front of the cover. Continuing the thread along the outside spine, you're going to move to the lower holes. Then once again bringing it to the inside, moving down a hole, and then bringing it right back outside to the cover again. Then pull on the thread and make sure you don't have any slack. Move down to the next hole in line, then go ahead and pull your thread to the inside and add your next signature. And from there, this signature is going to follow the same pattern as before of looping from the inside to the outside, go along the spine, and then looping it once more at the top. Only difference is this time you pull the thread through the loop that we made earlier, and then you can move on to the next signature. And that's basically how you do a long stitch. Repeat this pattern of weaving the thread from the inside to the outside of the spine. And when you get to the top, thread your needle under the loop of the previous signature. And that's what you're going to do for the rest of the sewing. For a more step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll link the video I used to learn this method down in the description. I know I tend to go pretty fast when explaining stuff like this. I know some people watch these videos just because they're interested in the process, so I don't want to overwhelm them with all the technical steps. But there also are people who might be trying to make the books themselves, so I want to make sure that they have the proper resources and the proper explanation to actually do it. I just try to have a good balance between the two. Once you get to the final hole on the final signature, pull the needle to the inside and tie a final knot, and then cut off the excess. And with that, the base of the book is done. And quite honestly, this looks like a pretty unique journal by itself. That could definitely work as like a D&D journal of if you just want to feel like a little bit more in character or medieval with the times or going to a renaissance fair, like this by itself would work. Unfortunately, with this bind, there is some overhang of the paper. So if you were to do this book yourself, try and leave a little bit room, more room there. I just ran out of leather because I was using scraps. And since we are going to plan to add a little wraparound Around anyway, I think it will be fine. But next, we just have to add our leaf texture. And for me, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but for you guys, it's and it's the next day. Wow, power of editing. I can't remember if this is actually the right angle or not, so we'll see how it looks. <laughs> anyway, a lot of the references I saw for the leaf booklets used leather. However, I don't have enough leather for that, so I'm going to cut out a leaf of the green felt, and then I'm going to paint it to look like the leaf texture. I only really have a loose plan, so we're kind of just going to make it up as we go. Also, don't judge me for drinking out of a mason jar. They were on sale at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Let's just move on with the project. All right, taking a look at some of the references I like, I start to sketch out what I want my leaf to look like. I kind of have an idea what I want it to look like, kind of like an Animal Crossing like furniture leaf, but I wasn't quite sure how the shape would translate to the book. I was in between two options here, one that was kind of at an asymmetrical angle and one that was straight down the middle. I liked both, so I ended up creating another pattern that was more curved towards the center. So now I can transfer it over to the green felt in confidence. I like that when it's something simple like this, I'm like, yeah, it's great to make a test pattern. But as soon as it comes to something way more complicated like sewing, I'm just like, nah, let's just dive right in. <laughs> now that we have the piece cut out, we can see it against the book and it already looks so good against the brown leather, but we still need to add some texturing and shading to make it look like a real leaf. Personally, I don't want it to look super realistic. I kind of like the idea of more cartoon style leaf. 
So mixing together a darker green with acrylic paint, I water it down a little bit and then start painting the edges. This is another reason I'm really glad I'm using felt because it's way easier to add this texturing compared to if I was using leather, I don't know how I would do this with like dye. Already with just the green shading, it has brought a little bit more dimension to the leaf, but I wanted to have a brighter color, so I'm adding a bit of a lime green into the center, making it look more like a spring or summer leaf. I add a few more subtle lines of darker green towards the center in hopes to make it look a little bit more organic. Then taking a light tan color, I'm going to try and paint the veins for the center as neat as I can. I feel like no matter if it's a preschooler or a college grad, everyone will always draw the same lines inside a leaf just because it's what we know. But it also makes it look super duper cute, so I'm happy with it. <laughs> Once that side of paint dries, it's time to flip it over and do it all again on the other side. Alright, so if earlier remind me of the Toy Story 2 guy, this one reminds me so much about Disney Pixie Hollow, you know, like the Tinkerbell movies. I was absolutely obsessed with those movies as a kid, and this whole project has reminded me of it because they would always have like clothes and items just made out of nature. Genuinely, I feel like this now could be like taken out of one of those movies. With the leaf now looking good, it's time to attach it to the book. Marking where I want it to meet on the back, I secure it in place with a little bit of Gorilla Glue. And while super glue may be magical in how effective it is, it doesn't really look that whimsical, so we're going to fix that. I wanted to add another stitch to help secure it down and make sure it won't go anywhere. So I punch in a few more holes, throw up another needle, and start sewing. I'm going to admit, this time I didn't know exactly what I was doing, I just knew I wanted a crisscross pattern and kind of just guessed the first time, which turned out to be very wrong, so I tried it again but then realized I was doing it backwards and then had to undo it once more. And then on the third time, I finally figured out what that pattern was. <laughs> this simple detail ended up taking way longer than I thought. And according to Google, apparently what I did was the cross stitch Danish method. But I absolutely love this detail so much. It makes it look so much more fun and handmade. Which brings us to the last step, which is going to be adding a way to securely close the book. There are two ways I've seen people do this, with either adding a string at the end to then wrap around the book to keep it closed, or what I'm going to be doing is adding a clasp onto the front. This is another set that I got off of Amazon that I'm still not the best with. From what I understand of it, you take the multiple receiving pieces, and then you take a little anvil technically, and then you just kind of hit it with a hammer to combine it. The IKEA hammer really came in handy this project, huh? And with that, our little nature journal is all complete. I absolutely love the style of journal and I'm so happy with the way this one turned out. If you so happen to stumble upon this channel and want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. That's it for today and I'll see y'all in the next one.